What's up guys, my name is Cliff with The Creator's Cup, and today we are not having a yard sale. We are actually going to talk about the type of gear we use when we make product videos. Not all of it is this expensive probe lens and slider combinations. A lot of it is just basic things like tiles, poster board textures, and even a drill, which I've shown in a few videos in the past, but these are really helpful. They really are. Another thing we're gonna go over is how we take these two pieces of PVC pipe, which were like two or $3 a piece, put them together, clean them up a little bit, and create a ring for the probe lens so that you can actually pull focus and be stable when you do it. This little hack is incredibly helpful if you own this probe lens because pulling focus is key. And we're gonna talk about that at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get into all the things we use to make our product videos pop, including this desk. So when you're doing product shots or video, one of the first tools you're gonna to want to acquire outside of a camera and lighting is a slider. You wanna add some kind of motion to your shots. And when you're doing smaller products and close-ups, trying to handhold or even use a gimbal just isn't practical and it's a lot of work. So for these shots, we're gonna start off with a very basic Amazon slider. And as you can see, it's wobbly, so we've stuck some zip ties on there to stiffen it up a little bit. You can also add weights and strings to kind of pull back on the slider to stabilize it if you just have one of these cheaper sliders. Even if it's motorized, it will help stabilize it. The second item on our list, which goes really, really well with a slider, is a turntable or a Lazy Susan. This is just something that's gonna allow your product to spin. This can also be used for time-lapse shots, but in this case, we are using it along with a slider to provide a more dynamic movement that's just more interesting. Another type of movement you want to try to achieve is vertical movement. Your slider is really good for push and pull shots and side to side shots. You can hold a slider vertical and use it that way as well, but you're not gonna be able to do two at once. In this instance, we were actually using a standing desk with the turntable on top of it and a slider on a separate table to create a dynamic shot that has push and pull movements, vertical movements, and your spinning effect. Another tip and something we did in one of our recent product videos was use a drill. We just took a drill and put the tip on it and hooked it into a light and spun a light around with a DeWalt drill. That's just something we had laying around in our garage and it worked really, really well. The next thing on our list is going to be textures and surfaces. This is something we actually picked up at Floor & Decor. It's just a flooring store nearby. And they had these tiles for about six or $7 a piece. I think they're about 30 inches by 30 inches. So we started out with white on white and now we're gonna to switch to a black background. When you're using this probe lens, it's really dark. So even if the background's a little uneven or wrinkly, it doesn't matter because it just blacks completely out. Now that we've switched to the black background, we're gonna start out with poster board. This first piece is just a basic white foam poster board that we picked up at your local department store or you can get it at a pharmacy for a couple dollars. It seems to work pretty well. These also work pretty well for reflectors. Now when we switch to black poster board, we start to see some imperfections and problems when we're taking macro shots. You can see that the paper isn't perfectly smooth. This is also why I don't like to use rolled paper when you're doing macro or close-up shots. Rolled paper does work great, however, whenever you're doing wider shots or portraits. Now, one of my favorite things we recently discovered is Ikea. <laughs> Ikea has these glass surfaces for custom desks that you can build if you just go into their warehouse section and you can buy these pieces for 10 or $20 a piece. Just make sure if you're using anything black or reflective that you clean it really, really well and this is where duster comes in handy. And be sure to take the time to center up your shots because you definitely don't want to get a shot that's off center and then either have to crop in so close that it looks bad or just have a shot that's not centered. That's not good at all. As with most of these shots, 
We would end up masking out the base so that you do not see the wooden desk below. Another cool thing we found were these mosaic tile sets. I believe we got these at Lowe's for about $4 a piece. And you can create a really cool scene with just different types of tile sets. They have pretty much anything you could possibly imagine. One nice thing is they are meshed together and they can allow light to flow up through them where you would usually put the grout. This will allow you to create a scene that is really, really dynamic just by putting a glass surface under them and then putting any color of light, especially if it matches your subject, underneath of that. It does take a little while to center these things up, but in the end, I think it creates a really cool scene. Again, make sure you take the time to clean your surfaces and just use whatever you have on hand. Now, this is an example with us using a red light to match the red bull, no pun intended, the red cans, on the underside of these tiles. By doing this, it creates this almost lava looking effect on the bottom side, which we thought was pretty neat. And you can pretty much do whatever you want here. Another thing with lighting is the vertical lights. So sometimes you want to light your subject, you can use a tube light and go side to side to create those two vertical lines to really give it depth, to make it look cylindrical. Now, thanks to Cajun, we had this sprayer on hand that she uses for her hair, but we filled this up with water and sprayed the cans to create this effect that makes them look cold. It makes it look like something you want to drink right now if you're thirsty. Spraying with water really adds pop and contrast to any kind of cold drink. You can add steam, even if you do it in post, to hot drinks. You can also use dry ice in that effect as well. For the focus ring on the probe lens, what we did is we actually took the probe lens into a hardware store, which was a little weird to be honest, and found a couple PVC fittings that would slide over it to create a nice clean fit without needing any kind of glue or adhesive so we could take it back off without damaging the lens. Fortunately, we found that these inch and a half and three inch adapters worked really, really well for that. And we went the extra mile and cut off the pipe threads so we could still reach the actual aperture when we had this on, as well as painted it black to make it look at least a little more professional. I know there are some systems like this you can buy online, but I'm pretty sure the larger ring gears that are actually stable are at least two or $300, maybe even more. I have seen smaller gears that you can get, or you can use these custom gears, but on that small barrel on that lens, it makes the gear ratio way too fast and incredibly unstable, especially if you're using a cheaper focus pulling system like the Nucleus Nano. We also went ahead and built a mounting system where we have a clamp on the front of the probe lens so that when you rack focus, the lens doesn't wobble side to side. That makes it really nice and tight. All in all, I think we spent about seven or eight dollars and a couple hours, including the drive to the hardware store to make this really useful little tool. So I hope those tips were really helpful to you. I know these things have really been good to us and help us get better shots in our product videos. One of the other things I wanted to talk about, and you probably saw in the video and we talked about with that focus system, is having someone to help you focus pull. And my better half Cajun here was doing that during this video and it really makes all of the difference. Whenever you're shooting something like this, you don't wanna be in autofocus because if you're in autofocus, the lens is gonna breathe and not pick the right part of the subject. So you need to be manual focused if you can, and if you have the help and a focus pulling setup, that is even better. Another tip, we talked about the tube lights a little bit. This is actually a great way to backlight a subject and also to provide lines on the front of a subject to give you kind of that vertical depth like we talked about in the video earlier. And she actually had an idea that I think made the Red Bull cans look so much better. This spray bottle was a huge help. Okay, actually this is called a mister and there's a big difference between a spray bottle and a mister. This is actually what I use to style my hair with and it works beautifully for product shots because if you see, it's not one stream of, of water that's spraying out, right? It's like a, a mist of water. And I think that's really important for creating that depth in the Red Bull cans because it created those dots of water all over. And I felt like that looked a lot more like 
the cans were actually sweating a little bit. It makes it look ice cold, like something you really want to drink right away. So Yeah, so those little things can really, really be helpful. And something else I wanted to mention, we talked about this Lazy Susan earlier. Um, there is a manual you can buy because this is about $80. You can get this, let me move this over from Amazon for about 12 bucks, I believe. And I'm gonna put links in the description to all of this stuff. And it's a great way to start if you need some rotation in your shots, if you don't wanna spring for this motorized $80 version. And for cleaning up your shots, the other big thing that was helpful to us was just a can of duster. Uh, I keep a lot of these around now because one, it keeps your computer clean, but also whenever you have a surface that has something on it or a product that has something on it and you just can't get in there and wipe it off, this works really well. And you usually don't wanna use liquids if you don't have to. So I hope this was all helpful to you. If you guys have any other questions, just please leave a comment below. We will do the best we can to answer those questions. And if you have any tips of your own, we would love to hear about them. We really would because this is a community and we're all trying to help each other. And on that note, we would really appreciate if you guys subscribe to our channel. And give it a like if you enjoyed these tips. Thanks guys. Thanks, see you in the next one.